Okay, so I guess he can be parried. Um, so that was attempt, I think, number four. Number five, something like that. Including the attempts that were uh, in the previous episode. Uh, but, hello! This is Aegon of Stora. And welcome back to my blind playthrough of Bloodborne. This is episode five. My heart is beating rather fast at this moment. So I hope you'll uh, give me a second uh, to catch my breath. Oh, wow. Um, that, yeah, that it was, that's an incredible boss fight. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous episode, uh, I can't recall when I first fought him, whether it was episode three or four. Uh, this, that boss fight reminds me a lot of Gwyn in that uh, he is super aggressive. Uh, the layout of the boss room is similar, not in, in um, appearance, but in terms of the existence of these uh, trees um, and in the kiln of the first flame, I think they're pillars of ash uh, around which you can, uh, you can use kind of to keep the boss at bay. Um, and yeah, uh, based on the fact that you can parry the boss as well. And that parrying, at least for me, uh, pretty easy. Not easy, but certainly uh, makes the boss fight. I imagine it would be a great deal more difficult uh, were you not to parry or not be able to parry the boss. Parry or post, I should say. So, I, I, I don't think I am crazy that uh, on the lamp, on the, the first lamp we actually lit, the one on top of that ladder at Central Yarnum, that the first time it's lit, there only seems to be four messengers, whereas, uh, yeah, the, the one at Central Yarnum has, I believe, eight or sixteen, something like that. So I wonder what causes that. So now I have eight insight, I'm noticing, and I don't know whether that's determined by, um, whether that is determined by, because it seems like when you die at a boss fight, or maybe just any time you attempt a boss, you gain insight? I don't know. Uh, now that Father Gascoigne is dead, we can have a look at some of the imagery just the layout of this boss, of the boss arena. And there are a number of, uh... Can you break the tombstones? He can break the tombstones, we can't. Um, but yeah, the tombstones are clustered, very haphazardly, seemingly, around, and, and it's concrete floor, so I don't know where bodies would be buried here, but it looks like there's just a great deal of decomposing bodies in various stages of decomposition throughout the boss room. And at the center, presumably reminiscent of evolution. Okay. Give you a little rating just because I'm not entirely sure what you're getting at. Is it the corpses on the floor? Wow. So these would, uh, or one of these bodies would be the one that Father Gascoigne was uh, putting out of its misery, seemingly, uh, when we first entered the boss arena. What is this? Hmm. So as uh, with, and look at these puddles. Oh, it's too bad they don't really seem to respond to the footsteps, but they look beautiful, especially with the lighting effects and everything. Uh, so as I mentioned in my Dark Souls 2 Let's Talk lore playthrough, uh, you could learn a great deal uh, about what FromSoft was trying to get across with a better knowledge than I have of iconography. And in this case, uh, whereas in Dark Souls 2, it would, it would likely... Um, it would likely be, uh, I guess, medieval iconography. In this game, Victorian iconography. So iconography being 
Uh, and as I said, I'm not an expert in iconography, so uh, even my definition might be wrong. But just uh, the study of the, the significance of certain cultural uh, icons. So it appears as though we found another shortcut. I wonder if you could have walked up those stairs during the boss fight. Seeing if there's anything around here. Take a step. Oh, yes, item. Thank you, fine note. You are a fine note indeed. Nothing but grief here, and have mercy, child. Okay. You see there's a ghost just having a seat there. Red Jeweled Brooch. Vasi Stas. Is that how brooch? I, th I, I assume brooch is spelled B-R-O-A-C-H, but... Looks like a brooch. Uh, a woman's bright red brooch engraved with the name Viola. Perhaps the jewel is a gift from a hunter used to change into a droplet of blood, blood gem that fortifies any weapon. With the proper workshop tool, various weapons can be fortified. So again, hinting at the existence of something like an ember from uh, the previous Souls games. Is that mist emanating from the note, or something on the roof here? Are there any other items in here to be picked up? Not that I can see. I really want to know. I, I suppose the, the coffins that are everywhere, chained up everywhere, perhaps to keep whomever is stored inside those coffins from turning into a beast, or from escaping as a beast. It's a shame you can't break the locks and open it and see what you find. Alright. So we're delving into some new uncharted territory here. Oh, is this, this must be the aqueduct that uh, the crestfallen hunter told us about. And so, we're at the point in the game now where I've seen absolutely nothing. So this is frightening. Very, very frightening. Looks like we have another scribe here. The Bergenworth spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost master from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. Hmm. And so presumably these notes are not... Or presumably, uh, these notes, not even presumably, are written by someone who at one point or another occupied this space in the world. So they're not top-down narrative devices that exist or, or originate from outside of the game world. They are situated firmly within the game world and thus must be understood in their proper context. Um, and so the context for... Whoa, is that a chest? I didn't think there were chests in this game. Uh, but this room reminds me a great deal of uh, the Duke's archives. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, and, and perhaps it's due to, I believe in the Duke's archives, these... Oh, it's a model of the solar system. That is very cool. And presumably, it looks almost like a model of the, the Ptolemaic system, uh, but just a fair bit less complex. The Ptolemaic system, of course, having the Earth at the center of the cosmos and all of the other bodies including the sun rotating around the earth uh, with a series of epicycles and acquaintance and stuff like that 
sounds ridiculous, but uh, mathematically, it was actually better than the first heliocentric sun 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 centered systems, uh, such that when Copernicus first you know posited that the sun was actually at the center, uh, the mathematics from his model actually were poorer in terms of their predictive ability than are uh, than are these uh, than was the the Ptolemaic model, which was really complex but mathematically sophisticated. So I'm tempted to hit this just to make sure that the first chest in the game is not a mimic. Ah, blood gem workshop tool. So there's our ember, it seems. A misplaced workshop tool from the hunter's dream. The hunter who retrieves this can fortify weapons by kneading blood gems into them. Blood gems add properties to the weapon when used to fortify them, as blood defines an organism. So, it, basically weapon infusion, seemingly? And we can infuse the weapon with this, I suppose. It would make sense seeing as we found them more or less together. But anyways, let's move on. We have made it to the Cathedral Ward. Before we try to talk to this person over here, who light that lantern just in case. Hmm? Oh, you must be a hunter. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside, waiting for it to end. It always does, always has, you know, since forever. But it won't end nicely, not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going by it. The screams of women folk, the stench of blood, the snarls of beasts. None of them's too uncommon now. Yarnum's done for, I tell ya. But if you spot anyone with their wits about them, tell them about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> okay. Not quite sure what to make of that. I know I shouldn't be asking you, but if you happen upon someone while hunting, tell them about this here Erden Chapel, if they seem worth being told, that is. Oh, and I do sincerely hope they are. <laughs> I can think of a person, someone who was rather upset that we didn't know of any safe places, but now that we do know about a safe place, perhaps we can go back and uh, actually help her this time. I know I oh, and I'll do sincerely nope. they are. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to skip through the dialogue there. Um, I'm tempted to break these pots and see if there are any items, but I really don't want to disturb that NP, so let's try to break it on this side. Alright, no items. So again. Someone with a robust knowledge of Victorian iconography would likely be able to piece together. Wow. Sorry, I'm, I'm 
like literally breathtaking. My my, I I'm just taken aback at the beauty of this game. Not just in terms of its graphic fidelity, but just the design and the imaginative, like the imagination that went that went into this, is just beyond beyond my ability to articulate it in words. Just stunning. Alright, well let's head back to the hunt. Oh! So, when I first lit it again, there were only four of them. And now there are a fair number. And it looks almost as though there are different types of messengers. Um, you can see that most of them are a pale white, but there are four that are kind of a gray color. Interesting. So as I may or may not have mentioned after having defeated Father Gascoigne, uh, it is Sunday, April 5th today. Welcome home. What is it? And uh, I decided that I'm, I'm going to record one or two episodes before I get to work, because I have lots of work, but uh, yeah, I'm, this game has just yeah captured my imagination in, in a way that uh, I've, I've never experienced before. Dark Souls 2 uh, did in a similar, in a similar but, but less less striking way than this game has so far. And Dark Souls 1, um, I was such a noob at that point when I first played back in 2012, uh, a fair bit after it was originally released, uh, that I kind of ruined it for myself by watching strategy guides and stuff because I kept going to the um, graveyard near Firelink and getting my ass handed to me and not understanding what I was doing wrong. So this is uh, kind of my first pure and remarkable soul's experience and such that I'm cherishing it very much. Very well. Let me... All right, so we have just enough for another level. Might as well put point to endurance. Farewell, good hunter. May you find you. Thank you. So as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to level Vitality, Endurance, Strength, and... Hey! He's back! I'm going to level those four stats and locks... No, no, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to level those four stats and lockstep until uh, 20, and then we'll reevaluate from there. Garman is back. The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods, where hunters partake in communion. So again, very, very uh, interesting the extent to which Catholicism is very much integrated into the storyline in a way that, uh, yeah, in the previous Souls games, based on kind of their medieval setting. Oh no, oh no, oh no, I did not mean to do that. Oh, Garman, I hope you forgive me, please forgive me for that. Oh, crap. Oh, I wanted to see if he had more dialogue. No. No. Garman, come back, please. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, that... Ugh. The PS4 triggers, I will say, are much too sensitive. And they jut out in such a way that... And maybe it's just because I'm still getting used to it relative to the 360 controller. Oh, that sucks so bad. Okay, so we require a fair number of uh, bloodstone shards once again in order to be able to upgrade our sock cleaver. I'm not going to upgrade 
uh, my my pistol for now, just because I'm not trying to. I'm not using it for damage. I'm using it solely for parrying at the time for the time being, and and not leveling my blood tinge. So uh, there's really no point, as far as I'm concerned. If you if you're not, but I, I could be completely wrong about that. But no point unless you're you're going for damage with a with your firearm. Fortify weapons using blood gems. Blood gems imbue weapons with special characteristics. So, what would I be fortifying this with? Select blood gem to fuse. Okay, so I don't seem to have any blood gems. So what was that, that, uh, the brooch that I picked up then? Oh, unless I'm supposed to... Nope. I'm supposed to use it? Use to change into a droplet of blood that... Oh, okay. So, let's use it. Ah! Okay. Physical attack up 2.7% and boost rally potential. So is that just critical attack, perhaps? Well, might as well use it because uh, I was assuming that uh, similar to infusions in previous Souls games, that it would it would uh, force us to sacrifice physical attack or physical scaling, but it seems that it boosts it, which is very cool. Okay, so how do I... Also, it's not permanent. So you can you can switch them in and out. That's very cool. So it's kind of like... Almost like Materia from Final Fantasy VII. Or, uh... And I only played Diablo III very briefly, but similar to the gems in Diablo III, it seems. But I can't recall whether you could switch those in and out or not. Can you tell Garman I'm sorry, please? Welcome. Over time, countless hunters have visited this stream. The graves here stand in their memory. It all seems so long ago now. Over time, it... Farewell. Please tell Garman I'm sorry. So let's see if there's anything new here. Hunter Chief Emblem. A cloth emblem that re that belonged to the captain of the church hunters long ago. Opens the main gate that leads to the round plaza of the Grand Cathedral. The main gate is shut tight on Knights of the Hunt, and could only be opened from the other side with this emblem. In other words, the captain's return and this emblem determined the end of the hunt. So I guess similar to... Crest of Artorias, and that it's a key that you buy for an exorbitant amount of souls or blood echoes. Uh, nothing new there. Nothing new there. All right. Thank you, messengers. Let's go to Cathedral Ward. Garrett, I'm sorry. I still feel so bad about that. Okay, so we have a f seemingly. Is this the. I assume this is the, the key that. Uh, or the door that would be opened with that key. But it just says closed and not locked, so I could be wrong about that. So we have a statue that's knocked over here, this one. Interesting. Okay, so we have two different paths we can take then. Let's go left first. About to take out my weapons. Well, these guys are carrying lanterns rather than torches. So they seem to be a fair bit fancier. And is that the threaded cane that they have? 
Hello. That was rather creepy how he pointed at me before attacking. A couple blood vials, we're gonna need some more quicksilver bolts soon. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! <gasps> what the? What just happened? I got inflicted with frenzy. Okay, that was really, really strange. Okay. I'm gonna go back in here for a second, so I can check out this armor that we just picked up. Oh, it seems that everything is the same, just the, the top hat that's different. Hat worn by hunters who admire formality. Some hunters place an emphasis on form as seen by the use of the threaded cane. So it was a threaded cane that that guy was carrying. For them, formality, beauty, and justice are the very essence of our humanity, and precisely what keeps hunters from becoming something else. So we would get an increase in blunt defense, decrease in physical defense overall, uh, decrease in blood defense, decrease in fire defense, increase in bolt defense more poison resistance, but less frenzy resistance, and less beasthood, whatever that means. Let's see, can we... In the other Souls games, the select button, or the back button... Oh, so it's R3 now. The higher this attribute, the closer you are to beasthood. One tr temporary transform. I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, so, in which case, the lower the stat, the better, actually. Okay, that looks pretty... Well, we're gonna have to go with the top hat for now. And I, uh, like, just judging by the seeming absence of any weight units for any of these, these armors, uh... I'm led to assume that there are no rolling thresholds or anything like that, or no no quick burdens, which is interesting. And, if, and seemingly no poise or anything either, which makes sense seeing as uh, Demon Souls didn't have poise. But Demon Souls did, as far as I'm aware, not only have equip burdens, but also uh, item burdens as well. And I suppose this one does too, in terms of the, the maximum for certain equipment, but... At least it doesn't prevent you from picking things up once you've reached the maximum. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, continue on, even though uh, we seem to be inflicted with frenzy, and I have no idea what that is, or whether it's an affliction or a positive attribute, because it could very well be positive. I don't know if I'm waiting too long, or I'm not close enough, or I'm too far away for the repose. So they don't look at all like the, the beast in central Yarnum, but they look like they have a whole other thing going on. Their faces are pale, almost like mimes. Almost as though they're painted white, but they don't seem to be. Okay, so these seem more like the standard enemies we were fighting in Yarnum, carrying torches. I don't know what this one guy is carrying. Do we have any pebbles? Well, we have plenty of pebbles. Let's see if we can aggro some number other than all of them. Okay, that works. Yeah, 
dogs. Okay. early for that uh, interrupt. Oh uh, yeah, it's pit the pitchfork guy. Ran out of stamina there. keep overestimating the range of my weapon. And these guys seem to have a fair bit more HP than did uh, the similar enemy types that were in Central Young. We have an item over here. Possibly a trap as well. Oh. Cold Blood Dew. Some, some consumable souls. Molotov Cocktail. Looking at my timer, we're on my recording at about 40 minutes. Uh, so, continue for another 10 minutes or so. Um, is this where I came from? It is not. Oh, we got a oh, rifleman and two dogs. Dead. Okay, so I should um, take care not to underestimate the enemies in this area, as I seem to have done there, in particular the dogs, who are quite nasty. I'll wait for the second guy to uh, head over to the overlook spot where we found him last time, so that we can take care of his buddy by himself. Traded, but thanks to regain, we got all that HP back. There we go. I'm thinking, um, that I should have my weapon in its shorter form, so perhaps that's the trade-off. Uh, much slower swings. The stamina usage appears similar. Okay, maybe it's a little bit more when it's extended. So, uh, less stamina exertion as well as uh, faster swings when it's in its smaller form. So whenever we're fighting the dogs, we're going to have to make sure we switch to that. So them dogs will stagger you to death. Yeah, that works much better. Okay, duly noted. No. No! Over here! Pitchfork guy. Right here, right here! No! <laughs> Wasting all my pebbles! There we go. Right between his legs. There we go. How you doing, fella? Okay, 
Okay, last time we went this way. There are my blood echoes. Okay, so let's try the other way this time. Some blood stain immediately to my left. Which leads me to believe. There's a trap of some sort in here, or maybe not. So this appears to be a tomb? Huh. Whoa! Yep. Assuming that's what that note was gonna say. Or insight awaits ahead. Okay. What the? Madman's knowledge. Oh, so it was. So that smoke I did see was from the note. Is that when you use the waits ahead message that it does that? That is very cool. Or, or just, just to give you some sort of directionality. Um, because in Dark Souls 1 and 2, it could be hard to tell sometimes, unless you knew, uh, unless you knew very well how the messages were formatted in terms of the, the graphic on the floor, uh, which direction was ahead. Okay. Uh, let's check out Madman's Knowledge. Skull of a Madman, touched by the wisdom of, uh, the Great Ones, used to gain insight. Making contact with Eldritch Wisdom is a blessing, for even if it drives one mad, it allows one to serve a grander purpose per for posterity. For posterity. So... This would seem to be the equivalent of humanity. And it says, touched by the wisdom of the Great Ones. So are there four main bosses in this game as well? Four Great Ones? Um, but I have nine insight, and as far as I can tell, the next time I die, I'm one, I need to make sure that I make note of whether I lose my insight. Because as best as I can tell you, you don't seem to be able to lose insight. But I wonder if that, that maybe has something to do with uh, beast mode transformation. Such that uh, the more you die, the more insight you gain, but the closer you somehow get to transforming into a beast. Oh, I didn't transform my weapon. I did not transform my weapon. <sighs> okay, so having died twice to those same dogs, uh, I believe I'm going to call it an episode here. So, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, and for those of you who have been here since the first episode, uh, thank you especially. Um, I haven't mentioned it in previous episodes, and I, I tend not to because... I find it annoying when I'm watching a video and all I hear is, oh yeah, you know, like the video, subscribe, like, make comments and stuff. So I won't say the first two, but I will say, uh, leave me a comment, let me know how you're enjoying the playthrough so far, uh, whether there's anything in particular you would like to see, uh, though I suppose that might be hard to do, um, given my request that there be no major spoilers in the comments. But in any case, uh, you know, I would like to hear from you if you're watching. Um, and But I do sincerely hope that you're enjoying. And while I might may not be able to, you know, grant specific requests for things because it's my first time playing the game, so I, I'm going to play it the way I generally play. Uh, and that is just pedantically exploring things and trying to piece together and make sense of the world around me. Uh, and I'm noting now uh, that I still have nine insight, 
and I believe I had nine when I died. So, unlike humanity in Dark Souls 1, you don't lose it when you die. And, let me see, in the stats menu, is there... So, Beast Hood 326. Oh, no. I, I really don't like how there's a button dedicated to that function. Because I keep pressing the back button, expecting it to do things that, yeah. So the higher the attribute, the closer you are to Beast Hood. When temporary... I don't understand the when temporary transform. It's not seemingly grammatically correct. Does that mean when temporarily transformed? Uh, or is that to say that when you, when you reach beasthood, you are temporarily transformed? I don't know. I, it's a Souls game, so it's got to come with some broken English, I suppose. But yeah, in any case, thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.